Let's talk about seven things you should never share with anyone because they attract poverty and stagnation. It is crucial that you pay close attention to the information I am about to share, because if you feel that your life is not progressing as you wish, then something is blocking your path and everything you desire always seems to be out of reach. It is probably due to one or more of these seven things that I will explain in detail why you should never share them. Starting with intentions. Number one, intentions. Intentions are the seeds of your actions. Keep your intentions hidden from others. This maxim, though it may seem like simple guidance, carries significant depth, especially in the context of personal and professional development. In the contemporary world, where transparency and sharing on social media have become the norm, the wisdom of keeping certain plans and intentions secret can be a powerful strategy. The nature of intentions is inherently private. They form the foundation not only of what we plan to do, but also why we choose to act in a certain way. Revealing these intentions prematurely can expose them to untimely criticism and also dilute the focused energy we need for their realization. In the realm of modern psychology, it is observed that merely announcing a plan can create a premature sense of accomplishment, reducing the drive for actual execution. Furthermore, in the context of business and finance, discretion regarding intentions can prevent competitive interference. In an environment where information is an invaluable currency, knowing when and with whom to share your plans can be key to maintaining a strategic advantage. Stoicism, in turn, teaches us to focus on controlling our own actions and reactions, not on manipulating others' perceptions. By keeping your intentions hidden, you protect yourself against unnecessary external influences and preserve your power to act according to your own analysis and timing. Practicing discretion about your intentions is also a way to strengthen your character. By deliberately choosing what to reveal and what to keep to yourself, you develop discipline and self-control, traits valued both in Stoic philosophy and in the business world. This practice is not about deceiving or being inflexible, but about making a conscious choice to share information purposefully and prudently. To incorporate this practice into your life, start by clearly establishing your intentions in a private space. It could be a personal journal, a secure digital file, or even a meditation space. Reflect on your intentions regularly and adjust them as necessary, always keeping in mind that these are your internal guidelines, not necessarily for public consumption. At the same time, be open to receiving feedback when appropriate, but choose meticulously the timing and audience for this sharing. This focus on keeping intentions private should not be confused with a lack of transparency or honesty. Rather, it is a matter of choosing the right moment for disclosure so that your actions can speak louder than your words. This strategy is especially relevant in long-term projects or goals that require careful and thoughtful development. As you continue navigating both your personal and professional journey, Remember the importance of protecting your intentions. Allow your actions to unfold at the right time and in the appropriate context before revealing the motivations behind them. By doing this, you not only protect your plans, but also strengthen your ability to execute them effectively. Moving on to the next crucial point in personal and professional development, we reach personal goals. Just like intentions, Personal goals require a careful approach. Number two, personal goals. Personal goals are the compass that guides our decisions and efforts. Keeping them to yourself can be an essential strategy to avoid distractions and external influences that may shift your focus or dilute your original intention. The wisdom of keeping your goals private goes beyond merely avoiding criticism. It is about maintaining the purity and authenticity of your personal path. When we share our goals broadly, especially in the early stages, we risk being influenced by others' opinions and expectations. 
Each person has a unique worldview, shaped by their own experiences, biases, and aspirations. While these perspectives can be valuable in appropriate contexts, they can often distort or even contradict our authentic goals. The philosopher Friedrich Nietzsche emphasized the importance of becoming who you are. This involves a process of self-discovery and fidelity to one's convictions, free from external interference. Keeping your personal goals secret strengthens discipline and mental resilience. In Stoicism, a philosophy that values control over one's own emotions and actions, the practice of keeping personal objectives secret aligns perfectly with the concept that we should focus only on what is within our control. The reactions and opinions of others, on the other hand, are outside this scope and, as such, should be considered irrelevant to the execution of our plans. Another benefit of keeping your goals private is the development of self-confidence. When you focus on achieving objectives without external validation, you build robust internal confidence. This not only makes you less dependent on others' approval, but also strengthens your ability to face challenges and adversities with a sense of purpose and unwavering determination. Plato, in discussing character formation, suggested that the true test of a man is how he behaves when no one is looking. Similarly, working quietly towards your goals is a demonstration of integrity and strength of character. Of course, there will be times when advice or support from others will be beneficial. However, the selection of confidants should be judicious and intentional. Choose to share your aspirations with trusted mentors or individuals who have a genuine understanding and sincere interest in your success. This selective approach not only protects your goals from negative influences, but also enriches them with constructive insights and support. By maintaining focus on the development and achievement of your personal goals, you create a path that is truly your own. This path though sometimes solitary, is rewarding for its authenticity and alignment with your deepest values. The journey to achieve these goals, free from the need for external recognition, is where true growth and development occur. Moving forward, we will explore another essential aspect of personal development and stoicism, acts of charity. While personal goals are internal and often hidden, acts of charity are external manifestations of compassion and kindness. However, even these generous actions carry a dimension of discretion. Number 3. Acts of Charity Acts of charity, by their nature, are expressions of generosity and humanity. However, the true essence of charity lies not in the pursuit of applause or recognition, but in the genuine desire to help and the impact these actions have on those who receive them. Discretion in acts of charity is a practice that reinforces character and aligns deeply with Stoic values, which prize virtue as its own reward. The practice of keeping charity private can be seen as an exercise in humility and integrity. Doing good without the expectation of reward or external recognition is a test of true altruism. This approach resonates with the Stoic idea that the value of an action lies in the action itself, not in the praise it might elicit. Epictetus, one of the great Stoic philosophers, reminds us that we should be content to live according to our own nature, and doing good is an intrinsic part of that nature. Moreover, keeping acts of charity private helps to preserve the dignity of those who receive help. By avoiding publicity, we respect the privacy and personal circumstances of the beneficiaries, allowing them to accept help without feeling exposed or diminished. This sensitivity can enhance the positive impact of charity, as the help is perceived as a gesture of pure interest and compassion, not as a maneuver for self-aggrandizement. Discretion in charity also allows for deeper reflection on the motivations behind our actions. Questioning why we want to help and whether our intentions are pure can be a powerful catalyst for personal growth. 
This introspection can lead to a clearer understanding of our own values and a more conscious practice of our virtues. Plato argued that self-knowledge is crucial for ethical life and understanding our true motivations is essential to living a virtuous life. In today's context, where many acts of charity are widely publicized on social media, opting to maintain discretion may seem counterintuitive. However, this choice can strengthen the authenticity of the actions and promote a culture of doing good for the sake of good without ulterior motives. This not only benefits those who receive help, but also enriches the character of those who offer it, aligning external actions with internal convictions. Thus, while society often celebrates grand and public gestures, there is a unique beauty and strength in acts of quiet kindness, which occur away from the spotlight. The practice of discreet charity can be compared to planting a seed. We do not need witnesses for the seed to grow and flourish. We just need fertile soil, care and patience. Acts of charity performed in private reflect a deep understanding of true virtues. They cultivate a spirit of selfless generosity and promote a more authentic connection between the giver and the receiver. This spirit of discretion and integrity leads us to the next crucial point for personal development and stoic practice, ongoing training. Just like charity, personal growth and enhancement are journeys that often occur in solitude and continuous reflection away from public eyes. Number four, ongoing training. Personal training, whether physical, mental or spiritual, is a journey that demands focus, dedication and introspection. Seeking external approval and recognition during this process can not only distract you, but also compromise the authenticity and effectiveness of your development. Keeping your training private deeply resonates with the stoic principles of self-sufficiency and internal control. By focusing on your own progress metrics rather than seeking external validation, you cultivate greater resilience and independence. This aligns with the Stoic teaching that we should rely solely on ourselves for happiness and progress, as these are aspects that reside entirely within our own sphere of control. Epictetus emphasized that we should concern ourselves less with the opinions of others and more with our own integrity and effort. This approach to training does not deny the importance of feedback or external advice, but prioritizes self-assessment and self-regulation as the main drivers of growth. By engaging in personal development practices away from the public eye, you have the opportunity to explore your limitations, test your strengths and learn from your mistakes without fear of judgment from others. This is a space where vulnerability transforms into strength. The internal focus during training helps preserve the energy that could be dispersed by concerns about others' acceptance. Kant, although not a Stoic, argued that autonomy is a fundamental principle of morality. Thus, being autonomous in your training is an exercise in ethical living, adhering to standards and values that are truly your own. Private training also fosters a deeper connection with the intrinsic reasons that motivate your development. Whether it's seeking better health, deeper knowledge, or a new skill, when you remove external distractions, it becomes easier to focus on the true why behind your actions. This practice reinforces a more genuine alignment between your actions and your personal values, facilitating progress that is both meaningful and sustainable. As you advance in your training, remember that the journey is as important as the destination. The ability to remain true to your path despite external influences is a demonstration of strength and commitment to self-development. This is a process that requires not only discipline, but also a considerable degree of courage to stay true to your principles, even when this means operating outside the view of others. As you develop through your private training, naturally, a greater clarity about other aspects of life emerges. 
This introspective and independent approach is vital not only in a personal context, but also in how we handle family matters. In the next topic, we will explore how the same discretion and internal control applied to personal training can be beneficial in managing family issues, a domain where challenges are often intertwined with the needs and expectations of others. Number five, family matters. Respecting the privacy of family matters is a practice that sustains the dignity and integrity of the home. By keeping family issues private, we cultivate an environment where each member feels safe and respected, free from external pressures and judgments. This approach is not just about privacy, but a reflection of the respect and value we place on the family unit. In Stoic philosophy, the emphasis on self-sufficiency and emotional control can also be applied to the family context. While externally we strive to maintain a facade of competence and control, it is essential to recognize that the home should be a space of authenticity and mutual support. Seneca, one of the most renowned Stoics, argued that true strength comes from within and that we must apply our philosophical principles first in our immediate environment, namely at home. Keeping family matters private also helps to avoid unnecessary conflicts or misunderstandings that can arise when too many external opinions are introduced into the domestic environment. This principle is especially relevant in modern times, where social media and other digital platforms can quickly amplify personal issues, transforming internal challenges into public spectacles. Privacy allows families to face and resolve their problems more effectively. By addressing issues internally, family members can focus on honesty and resolution, rather than worrying about external appearances. This environment promotes more open and honest communication, vital for the growth and strengthening of family bonds. The practice of keeping family matters private is also aligned with the teachings of many philosophers about the importance of discretion. Plato believed that justice begins at home and that maintaining internal order is the first step toward contributing to order in the state. In a more practical sense, this means that by managing our homes with respect and prudence, we are indeed cultivating the virtues necessary for a more harmonious society. Another important aspect is respect for the individuality of each family member. By keeping family matters private, we acknowledge and respect the different perspectives and needs within the home. This teaches, especially to children, important values such as trust and mutual respect which are essential for the development of healthy relationships both inside and outside the family core. It is vital, therefore, that family discussions and decisions are treated with the seriousness and confidentiality they deserve. By doing so, we strengthen the foundations of the family, allowing all members to feel part of a cohesive and protected whole, where they can express their true emotions and opinions without fear of external repercussions. The respect for privacy and the integrity of family matters is a natural extension of the stoic commitment to authenticity and internal control. By maintaining these practices, we not only protect our loved ones, but also cultivate an environment where true personal and collective growth is possible. This respect for the private sphere leads us to the next crucial topic, the management of wealth and possessions. Just like family matters, the way we handle our wealth and material resources reflects our priorities, values, and ultimately, our worldview. Number six, wealth and possessions. Keeping wealth and possessions private is not only a practice of prudence, but of deep wisdom. In a world where ostentation often attracts unwanted and sometimes even dangerous attention, Choosing a stance of discretion about your material resources can preserve both your security and your peace of mind. This principle aligns with Stoic teachings, which exhort us to focus less on external goods and more on the development of internal virtues. Wealth, when displayed, can arouse envy and resentment among others. 
Stoicism, through figures like Marcus Aurelius and Epictetus, teaches us that true wealth is not that which is seen and admired by others, but that which resides in the richness of the spirit and the ability to maintain serenity in the face of life's vicissitudes. By keeping your material possessions private, you not only protect your assets from envious eyes, but also cultivate the appropriate indifference to others' opinions about your financial situation. Furthermore, discretion regarding wealth allows personal relationships to flourish based on respect and authenticity, not interest or greed. When friends and family are not constantly confronted with displays of wealth, it is more likely that interactions remain genuine and that bonds are based on shared values and mutual experiences, not material gains. The philosophy of keeping wealth private can also be seen as an exercise in self-control and moderation, values dear to Stoicism. By choosing not to openly display your possessions, you practice self-mastery and demonstrate an understanding that the value of life is not measured by the amount of goods accumulated, but by the quality of character developed. Additionally, financial discretion can serve as a safeguard against economic fluctuations and adversities. In times of uncertainty, those who have kept their wealth secret can navigate difficulties with less visibility and consequently, less vulnerability. This is in harmony with Seneca's advice on the importance of preparing for life's reversals by cultivating an inner fortress that cannot be shaken by external changes. This approach to wealth also encourages deeper reflection on the purpose of material resources. By considering your possessions as tools for performing good deeds and promoting the common welfare, and not as status symbols, you align your use of wealth with higher ethical and moral principles. Plato emphasized that the true purpose of wealth is to facilitate the soul in its journey towards virtue and wisdom. By cultivating a private and modest relationship with your possessions, you also set an example of how true satisfaction and security come not from what we own, but from who we are. This understanding leads us to the next crucial topic on the path of personal development, spiritual experiences. Just like with wealth, profound spiritual experiences are best kept in a space of respect and personal introspection, where their value can be fully appreciated without external scrutiny or influence. Number seven, spiritual experiences. Keeping profound spiritual experiences to yourself is an act of preservation and respect for these intensely personal and often transformative experiences. Sharing such experiences risks being misunderstood by those who do not share the same spiritual path or context which can diminish the value and purity of these moments. The spiritual experience is a deeply individual journey. It reflects our intimate connection with what we consider sacred or transcendental, whether defined within religious, philosophical or personal parameters. In Stoic philosophy, the idea that we are citizens of the world encourages us to look inward and cultivate our character and virtues. This aligns with the notion that spiritual experiences are, in essence, an internal dialogue between the individual and the universe. Keeping these experiences private allows an environment where introspection and reflection can flourish without the interference of biases or external expectations. This practice not only protects the integrity of the experience, but also strengthens personal development by encouraging a deeper and more personal examination of spiritual revelations. Considering the subjective nature of spirituality, it is important to recognize that each person is at a different stage of their spiritual journey. What is revealing and profound for one may not be understood or valued by another. Moreover, the process of trying to verbalize experiences that are often beyond words can lead to misunderstandings or simplistic reductions that do not do justice to the complexity and richness of the original experience. On the other hand, 
there is value in maintaining a personal record of these experiences, whether through a spiritual journal or meditative reflections. These records can serve as a source of inspiration and ongoing guidance, helping to deepen personal understanding and spiritual evolution. The practice of recording such experiences also echoes the Stoic approach to constant self-evaluation and improvement, allowing one to observe progress and changes over time. The decision to keep spiritual experiences private does not exclude the possibility of seeking guidance or advice from spiritual mentors or trusted individuals who can contribute to the understanding and integration of these experiences. Choosing carefully whom to share with allows for a dialogue that can enrich the experience without exposing it unduly. By approaching spirituality with a sense of privacy and introspection, we reaffirm our commitment to a path that is defined more by inner search and less by external validation. This approach not only strengthens our spiritual resilience, but also keeps us anchored in our deepest values and convictions. Thus, we conclude this series on the practices of discretion and privacy in different aspects of life. Each topic discussed, from preserving personal intentions to maintaining privacy in spiritual experiences, reveals a common theme, the importance of cultivating a rich and protected inner life, essential for personal and spiritual growth and development. If you've made it this far, you're different from the rest. You're seeking knowledge in a world where most are distracted by superficial things. Show that you're different and join us. Subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell. If you have something to say, leave your opinion in the comments. Otherwise, write, I am here, so I know you've made it this far. Until next time, warrior.